today I'm going to go over some um, the inputs and output uh, setup and um, kind of what they can do, some little tips and tricks and whatnot. So let's get into it. This is in uh, Holly EFI V6. Um, I've got a global file already open. If you don't already have this box right here, this is your input output ICF. What you'll do is click on toolbox and then um, add, uh, add individual config and then you'll come down here to IO and then there's a few different options but you typically would just grab the base config right here. So anyway, I've already got it. So we're going to go into IO. So uh, I see a lot of people who have, um, you know, questions about like how do you make a manual override switch for a fan and still have the computer control it. Um, also, how do you, you know, same thing for like electric water pumps or maybe fuel pumps, um, trans cooler fans, whatever it may be. So uh, this is the way I go about doing this, okay? So down here, I've got a water pump switch. It's a 12 volt, so there's a switch in the car and uh, it's labeled water pump, right? Uh, so, so that's a 12 volt switch. So all I did was name that, it's a 12 volt switch. And I've already got it pinned, it's a J2A1. And if you don't know how to pin that, you, I've got other videos on that, but you can click on pin map. And then um, we look at J2A1, there it is, water pump switch. So what that means is there's a toggle switch in the car, well there's a rocker switch in this car, and um, it has 12 volt on one side of the switch, and then you turn the switch on and it sends 12 volt back to J2A1. Okay, so there's our water pump switch. There's nothing to configure because it's a 12 volt input. Right, uh, and now we have to create an output. So we're going to trigger a relay. This is the water pump relay, right? So we come over here to outputs, and let's find water pump. So there's our outputs right here. See, it says outputs, water pump. Uh, this is also a 12 volt output. It's on J2B4. You'd pin it the same way as we we just looked at for the input. We'll do it again though. Pin map. This time we're going to click view outputs. And uh, J2B4 right here, water pump. So that means that the wire coming out of here is going to provide a 12 volt signal to our relay. Okay, so this car is using a relay board uh, that requires a 12 volt input. And um, so we send the 12 volt out of the ECU to turn on the water pump relay, which in turn will turn on the water pump. So this is where you have to actually do the setup. So here's water pump. We're going to come over here. It's going to be enabled, and then we're going to click configure. So. This is an electric water pump, um, RPM above 500. We want the water pump to run the whole time the car is running. This is the way the customer wants it. So the RPM above 500. Extremely simple. All you have to do is click one up here on switched input triggers. This output will activate when, and there's our list. We've got water pump switch is enabled. So um, if you look at this here, it says and that this setup right here would mean RPM has to be above 500 and the water pump switch has to be enabled. What we can do here is change this to OR and now if the key on engine off, um, water pump switch has got to be enabled or once the engine's running above 500 RPM, it's already running. So if the car is going to sit, you know, in the pits between passes or whatever it may be or you want to just cool it down or hell, if you're just trying to burp the air out of the cooling system, you know, when you've got a, a new build here, um, you can just hit your water pump switch without it having any uh, engine RPM. So uh, a lot of people would do this based off of coolant temp, but with an electric water pump, I highly suggest just letting it run the whole time because uh, you will absolutely need to circulate the water, depending on where your water temp sensor is, to actually get coolant temp up high enough to trigger the... Uh, trigger the condition. So that's a water pump. Uh, we'll do the same thing as a fan. Here we go. We have a, a uh, we have a fan switch, right? So there's one, there's one switch in the car and it's just labeled fan and uh, the customer wants all of his fans to run. So we're going to go to outputs, fan one. So here's our sensor trigger, right? So RPM has got to be above 500 and coolant temp has to be above 135 and then it'll run the fan. Now what we do, this is all. Notice it says all. If you wanted to change this to single, what that means is either one of these conditions would trigger that fan. So that means that with the key on engine off, 
um, and the, say the water temp is above 135, it's going to run the fan. So even though the engine's not running, so we change this to all, so that means that all of these conditions need to be met in order for it to, to run. Then we come over here to switch to input trigger one. This output will activate when the fan switch is enabled. So uh, again, the only way this would work is if all of these conditions were met plus the fan switch was met. So we change that to or, and now we've got fan control, fan one based off of the, that switch. Um, we can come back here and look at fan two, switched output triggers one, fan switch is enabled, CTS here, uh, we can change this to or, and now when you press one fan button, both switches are going to run with key on engine off. Um, so that's a, it's a pretty simple thing. Uh, there's a lot of other ECU manufacturers out there that don't have this type of programming capability. And this, to me, is one of the most powerful things in Holly. There's a ton of stuff you can do with this. But, you know, this is about as basic as it gets. But it's very useful, very helpful uh, when it comes to laying out your project, when it comes to wiring your project and making it function how you want it to. So uh, if you have some switches already in the car, it makes sense to, uh, to do this. So, like, here's your standard trans fan output. Um, this, was, this would be set up, I haven't set this up yet, but this is set up, okay, RPM above 800. And then um, what we can do is two, we make this all, we can change RPM to trans temp above, say, 120. And, uh, or, you know, actually more realistically, 180 and deactivated 160, right? So we got a trans temp sensor uh, in, the, in the pan, and uh, if RPM is above 800 and the trans temp is above 180, there you go. So this is a turbo 400. Um, we have a trans temp sensor in the pan. So uh, some simple basic input and output explanation. Um, we're going to look at I'm going to show you some PWM output stuff as well. So I have to open up a different, uh, I'm going to save this. We have to open up a different global. Um, so here we go. We go to IO, go to outputs, and we go to fan PWM 1. So um, I haven't set this up yet, and uh, but this is you know just an example. Fan PWM 1, we're sending a pulse width modulated output in the in 12 volt pulse width modulated. Uh, if we go to configure. CTS is above 110, RPM is above 500. Um, we can add a switch if we wanted to. So uh, with this car, it's got a master enable switch. Uh, so when you're making a pass, and we can change master enable is enabled, change it to OR. So just like we showed you before, but now we have PWM set up. So this is pulse width modulated. So if you wanted a fan to run at different... Um, uh, duty cycles based off of temperature and wheel speed and whatever, you know, so you could do it here. So we would change RPM drive to fixed uh, frequency. This controller uh, prefers 500. So um, we're going to change this to duty cycle. Table units are going to be duty cycle. So 100% duty cycle would be on 100%, you know, running wide open um, and zero would be off. Uh, you know, running at 0% duty cycle. So we've got two axes to work with here. So our y-axis is, um, <clears throat> is right here, and then our x-axis is here. So <clears throat> what I want to do with this, and, um, and because this car uh, does not have any type of a, a ram air, you know, across the front grille or anything like that, um, I'm going to change this from duty cycle uh, for our x-axis, we're going to change it from TPS to front wheel speed, okay? We have to scale front wheel speed, so let's scale front wheel speed to 225. So at 225 miles an hour is the top of our thing here, right? So we're going to left-click, hold, and drag, right-click, and fill row values. So now I just got, you know, dead stop here to 225. Um, over here, we don't really care. It, it wouldn't make sense to scale this for boost, right? So we would have to scale this for like a temperature. So 
we get a map or a change from map to uh, there's a lot of stuff on this card coolant temp all right so obviously if coolant temp ever gets to 999 we got a big problem um, but let's scale the top end of our, uh, our of our scale to, uh, to 250 degrees and um, let's scale this to zero degrees and we left click hold and drag right click hit fill row columns now we got some breakpoints from zero to 250 degrees now if we are at 250 degrees let's just say it if we're over 200 degrees we absolutely want this is 200 right we absolutely want this fan to be running a hundred and hundred percent duty cycle so plug in a hundred so it doesn't matter what the front wheel speed is we want that fan to be running at 100 percent duty cycle uh, if our coolant temp is zero we don't want that fan to be running it doesn't matter so that's going to stay zero so where do we want our fan to come on we probably want our fan to come on at 150 degrees right so at 150 degrees until 60 miles an hour i want this fan to run at 20 percent duty cycle let's you know let's do 30 let's do 30. okay then here we're going to go to 60. we're going to go to 80. so now under from 60 mile an hour and down we're always like once it reaches 150 degrees it's going to run at 30 percent duty cycle and if the temp continues to climb it's going to run at 100. so the goal here is to try to keep this thing running at that temperature so why would we want to shut the fan off once we're going 60 mile an hour or above 60 mile an hour well because there's probably air coming across the front of the fan that is um, flowing more volume of air than what our fan could flow right so this isn't the case with with this car because this car has got a front end that's sealed off but um, you know that most cars have some good airflow across the front of the radiator so you would want to use like something like front wheel speed or drive shaft speed or something like that to um, to be able to shut that fan off um, so that's a that's one way to uh, to set up a fan PWM we go back let's look at fan PWM 2 and uh, so obviously I haven't set this up yet but um, but we can we can still look at the PWM setup table again we change this from RPM derived to uh, fixed the frequency these fans like 500 Hertz um, this the fans that are being used in this car are the uh, Delta PAG fans so um, if you do this and you want to use a Delta PAG fans uh, you have to use their little ECM um, you don't have to use your controller but you can use your ECM and then you can just PWM positive the signal from the ECU out to the little ECM so we're gonna change that table units to duty cycle and now we can play with different uh, x-axis right so if you want to do it based off of RPM or off the throttle position right uh, you can do it off the throttle position you could do it um, you know however you wanted you find something in here and uh, and modify it however you see fit and use both axes to uh, to make it happen so anyway pretty basic uh, understanding of how the inputs and outputs work in Holly and um, you know what you can do with them so there's a lot more options here oh before I go one last thing there's something that it seems like a lot of people ask about um, so you can loop an input to an output okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go file uh, I think I did it in this one yeah so I think I did it in this one so here's what I did we go to inputs and uh, right here injector coil loop so it's in j1a3 um, the in j1a2 is our output so let me show you that help contents wiring manual right here okay so uh, right there this right here is your fuel pump out so if you've got the uh, the factory harness there's a relay that gets triggered from this output okay so this output um, turns on for the amount of fuel pump prime time that you set in the ECU as well as once it sees RPM so it sends 12 volt out of this output right so this is a pre-canned output you can't change this so uh, 
here's the way I do things. So I loop J1A2 to J1A3, okay? So that's one of the conditions that we're going to make to turn on our injectors, our coils, our, um, you know, wh whatever, fuel pump, whatever you want. I like to do this because it gives you the ability to shut the, the car down if there's a problem, right? So we go to outputs, and I've got injector coil out, okay? So this is 12 volt injector coil out. Let's look at the configuration. So this, this output will enable when injector coil loop is enabled, right? Um, we can add something here. This output will activate when, and just, just an idea here. Obviously, don't take what I'm doing here, you know, as the gospel. Coolant temp is below 220, okay? So what that means is if the engine's running and it gets over 220, it's going to shut it off. So the engine will shut off because we're going to kill the power to the, uh, or we're going to kill the trigger wire to the, uh, the injector and coil um, relays that we have, right? So this is a simple way to add multiple functions to shut the car off if there's a problem, okay? So um, we can add multiple, right? So all, and we can say um, if... Come on, RPM is below 10,000. Uh, and we can say oil pressure, come on, honey, is below 15. So um, this, will, this will run, I'm sorry, is above 15. So this will run, it'll turn on the injectors and the coils as long as the injector coil loop is enabled, right? And coolant temp is below 220, RPM is below 10,000, and oil pressure is above 15 PSI. So when you're cranking the car, you're not gonna have power, um, you're not gonna have power from your injectors and coils until it reaches 15 pounds of oil pressure. Um, and it's obviously not gonna crank over faster than 10,000 RPM. And if it's over 220 degrees, it's not going to crank. It's not going to fire up. I shouldn't say crank. It's not going to fire up. It'll crank all day long uh, or until your battery goes dead. But this, uh, this little tidbit um, could probably save you and help you guys out a little bit. So hopefully you learned something from it. Thanks for watching. See you.